Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Thursday, April 13th, 2023. First thing I got to do today is I need to apologize for missing an error in my count on the ES yesterday, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But I didn't miss the error in the NASDAQ. I just was way too quick. So let's start here with the NASDAQ. I've reverted back, which is what was there before, the A, the B, and we're in the C wave. I had just worked it death that the C wave was complete here. Then we spend some time, and I'm going to go back down to the hourly chart. We spend some time moving lower, going up, heading lower, and I... I felt that we needed to see follow through there. But as I said, if it went up and got above 13,005, 13,105, which would have been actually 13,110, which is the high here, excuse me, that, that would invalidate and leave this as three waves down. And it did just that in grand style. And today, it was Apple's turn to just squeeze the shorts. And squeeze they did. With Credit Suisse coming out this morning with an upgrade in the price, but they found a new way to really say what it was. They said that Apple will rally 18%. That caught people's attention because the actual price raise was not all that much. So when we look at the whole thing, that stock certainly just took a, a quick tumble higher. And it was very quick, and the stock was very active, and I felt it was short covering all the way up. The 162, 165, 167 and a half, they just started covering shorts. And you can do that by buying the stock. So in any case, the NASDAQ appears to have completed a very ugly, strange fourth wave at yesterday's low, which came in the Globex. It came at the start of the Globex session at 12,921. And if we look what happened, they didn't get quite up to Tuesday's high, or Wednesday's high, excuse me. But they got close. They got within 20 points. Now, what it does appear is that we're working through a five-wave structure up for minor wave five. But we now need to be careful. Is this going to be minute one, two, minute three, minute four, and then we rally in a minute fifth wave? Or is it going to be wave one of minor five. So we've got a lot of choices now. But again, I'm just going to tell you that my, my feeling remains that the rally itself is getting very tired. It continues to be pushed by varying factors that may or may not actually have a contributing factor to why the market should be higher. But nonetheless, we saw it move, and we saw it move straight from today's number in the PPI. And as I've said so many times before, that the reactions now aren't coming from, I mean, sure, individual traders, yes, they're going to be entering orders. But primarily, it's algorithms. Because the first swing was very quick, and it came right there. So about, about 8.30 a.m., bam, and then they brought it back down. And then it continued to rally from the opening. So within this bar, we had our uh, regular trading session, RTH, right there. And then it just went up all day, coming down after the close. We saw some sellers come in. So how am I going to count this? Well, like I said, one, two, three, four. 
Now we need to determine, is it going to be wave one of five or is it going to be wave five of five? So let's start putting together some fibs that we can look for what this wave five may decide to look like. So I actually have to go out to the four hour chart because I need to find this wave two, which is all the way down there so low. So again, just taking the fibs the way it's labeled. We go from the bottom of wave two to the top of wave three, back down to the bottom of wave four. So again, being the fifth wave, in a C wave, it's a completing, and we now need to just look at what are the most common Fibonacci relationships between wave five and three. The first being that wave five will be 0.618 times the length of wave three, and that's going to come in at 13,699 or 13,700. But, oh, excuse me, as you can tell, I'm still fighting the flu. Um, but then above that, we see it gaps quite a bit. So I'll be paying attention to what I can add in between all of this. First thing wave five needs to do is to get above yesterday's highs and then above wave three's high. So we I would expect that it's at least going to get above 13,353. Now, tomorrow, it may happen. Tomorrow is an expiration. It's a weekly expiration. So we may get there tomorrow. They may come after Apple and they might just push it right through and get us right up to those levels, at least past 13,350. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we have 13,404, I'm going to call it, 13,460, 55 to 60, 13,550, and then we start to break. Again, we have 13,650, 550, then 650, and then we have 13,700. And that does seem like the area that will likely kind of find some stiffer resistance, maybe. Again, after tomorrow, we start earnings, and it's the banks. And JP Morgan and Citigroup will be, re be reporting tomorrow. I'm sure there are others. I'm just not aware of exactly which ones. We will be paying attention. Both of those will come pre-market. The banks will come pre-market. And anything that's going to report tomorrow will come pre-market. In terms of what may come via numbers, all we have tomorrow are retail sales. Now, being that Apple does have retail stores, and it's already been reported that in in the month of March, I believe that was the what I read, was that Apple suffered a, almost a 42% decline in uh, Mac sales. So iMac and then the MacBooks and the MacBook Airs, et cetera, et cetera. But in the Mac family. Now, Apple is, just, is a tough company. Apple is well-financed company. Apple can definitely handle not having the greatest of a quarter in sales. So by no means is it saying that Apple is bad or not or whatever. But what it does say is that it might be overpriced at its current level in terms of trying to put it in line with earnings versus price. So again, I can't tell you right offhand how retail or even corporate are going to act to those earnings in Apple or to the retail sales numbers tomorrow. Will it affect Apple? I don't know. They're not that specific. But I, I do know that Apple, which reports on May the 4th, which is the day after the Fed meeting, right? April the, uh, May the 4th, the next Fed meeting is May the 3rd. And it's going to get very, very interesting this particular earnings season. So because 
I continue, even though I felt that we could have been done. I did mention breakpoints. They didn't get close. They got, or I shouldn't say, they didn't get exceeded, but they did get very close. So it brings back the previous count, which is nothing more than just switching the third back over. I'm putting the fourth down here. And then, actually, I could put the third there, to be honest with you. And then rallying up in a fifth wave. So we'll have to pay close attention. Now, I'm going to go back down to that hourly chart. And we're going to open this up. And I'm going to add, just for tomorrow, basically, what else we can say. I can go here. And again, I can't determine quite if the market's going to rally or drop once Globex starts. But let's just say that this low, this closing, or this low here into the last, or into the, into the after the close, um, where are we going to find resistance? We're going to find it at 13,234. Two, 13,243. Wow. My eyes are getting bad too. And then 13,253, 13,282, 13,314. Those all can just be fifth wave. So again, if we're comparing wave five to wave three, wave three was dynamic. It was started at 12,957 and got as high as 13,228. Dynamic rally in the NASDAQ. So yes, if they pick it up and do it another day, then we're going to be looking at these upper levels, 13,346, 13,370. Then we're up to 13,400. And as I spoke yesterday, it even in lieu of considering that the whole move could have been done, I said, if it isn't, and they come up and break that level, which they didn't, but they got very close, and I suspect that it will. Now, stranger things have happened, but the market would have to reverse, literally reverse, and come all the way back down if indeed this is the three, and this is a one, and this is a strange two, and this is one, and this is going to be two. It did not take out that high, but as I've done in the past, I always look at the line chart, which tells me that it did. This is on the closing basis. The line chart is the close of that bar. So when I go back over to the candle, you see it had a big wick. So it's a big, uh, the extreme that the CPI number took the market yesterday. The reality is it really was way down here. So this did already break that high. So that's why I'm going to leave it in place. And that's why I'm putting all this into place. So again, we have resistance, uh, wave, wave five of this, either one of five or five of five, does project to 13,334, which by the way, almost takes us above the high of wave three, right? That's wave three. I'm looking for this to take it out. If it only gets to here, I may have to feel that it's just wave one of five. Remember, putting this fib in gives us where the extensions can go, and we're already considering 13,700. So if it were to stop there, 317, or even 13,550, which is into this area, it may have gone above wave three on both sides, but I would not be able to really complete if it only got here. Then I'm going to be more in tune with, right? Remember, here it does get above that high. Here it just equals that high. Can happen, but I'm going to be more in tune to saying it's wave one of five. Then we get a wave two and then a three, and a four, and a five. So our moving averages are probably as confused as all of us because they're flat. The 50 again turned higher. 
the 20 again tried to keep pace. The four and the eight rallied strongly. So I'm going to be looking for additional upside. We may get that. And at the Globex start, we may get it when Asia comes online. We may get it when Europe comes online. But I am looking for additional upside, at least to above today's high, and then above, which we already know it did. But getting above that extreme ties it the ribbon and puts it on the package, makes it all nice and pretty. So, but I am looking for higher levels now. And you may wonder, how can he change his mind? It's not me. I'm trying to follow what the market is telling us. And this is his best. Remember, I really don't trade with the directional bias. So I'm not bullish, I'm not bearish. And that allows me to walk in each day and go, like, okay, this is what you're doing today, market. Let me participate in this buying spree. Now, if I was bearish, I'd be like sitting on the sidelines or shorting it, getting my butt kicked. So that's not what I do. It's not what I do. And people that are carrying positions, if it's just a single short, then I think that, please contact me. I can help. We, you need to be able to balance your position, to manage the risk of the position. And if you're using the future or the SQs or the TQs or the Qs, there are excuse me, options that you can put around this position that if you were looking at it on a graph, you'd have a big smile. It's called putting the tails in place, being prepared for the unexpected. So when it does happen, you don't lose your shirt. All right, so that's the NASDAQ. Let's go over and talk about the S&P. Folks, this one I do. I send my apologies for missing. Remember, this is what I had. And then when it went up here and it started to come off, I thought, okay, that's done. Well, I got to put this over here, put the B wave down here, put the C wave up here. And I didn't notice. <coughs> and I have to say, it's likely because I feel the, pretty much the way I feel today. It's a little bit on the rough side. I didn't notice that wave C moved higher than wave A. And if we're in a diagonal or a contracting triangle, which is what it would have been, that can't happen. They need to contract. They need to shorten. So this, if that truly was an A, and this could have been the B, the C wave should have held underneath it. And at that point, we can use Fibonacci. There are Fibonacci relationships between wave A and wave C. And wave C should come in at about 0.618 of wave A. So if this was wave D, it should be about 0.618 of, of wave C. And it wasn't. So missing those steps caused the error. I apologize for concluding that, it, oh, look at that triangle, beautiful. It came up to the top and did it again today. As a matter of fact, it did it again today. It only got as high as 41.77 and then backed off. So two days, it's, it's hit that high. So back to the way it was. And, in, and to be honest with you, that's why I kept this as this type of a triangle. And, I, and in that case, I needed to go out and put the primary A up here and call this an irregular B. This would have been wave A. This would have been wave B. This could have been wave C, wave D, wave E. Now, on that basis, it could still stand. But we're going to have to wait for tomorrow. If it breaks above 41.77 and does and shoots up and then comes flying back down, we may still have a triangle pattern in the making. But as I presented it yesterday, no. 
not correct. The internals did not work for the triangle that I was attempting to count. It did work for the larger triangle that I presented, but I had moved the A wave over, not here, not at the June lows. I put it at the October lows, and that changed it. That was, you had to move that over here. So it may still be, to be honest with you, but I'm going to have to do it correctly. I'd have to move the primary A to the June lows, A, B, C, D, E. Then it will fit, and I'll show you once again. I'm going to go over, and I'm going to use this. It's connecting the A, and it comes right down there. Connecting the B up to the C, a D wave, and we have this beautiful triangle. So, but I'm going to have to move the A over to here and then change this all back around. So it can still work. A, B, C does not take out that high. There it can work. D, E. We will see tomorrow. Tomorrow is kind of its make or break day. So my problem was announcing that leaving the primary A there, that triangle does not work. Moving it over to here, that triangle does work. <clears throat> so I apologize for the miss that I did, but we still may see it. We got to let the market tell us. So I've now reamped and put up the new fibs, which were actually old fibs. If this is wave three, which actually should be over here, to be honest with you. But I'll leave it there. No, I can't. I'm going to have to do that differently. That's not what I would call correct. So I'm going to put that down there. I got this crazy four. Let me just see. Three, A, B, C. Good. But that means I got to change this. Let me change this around. I'm now, I'm seeing the error of my ways. You know, it's like, I won't be making those mistakes, even though I might not be feeling well. So I want to be able to put back my fibs correctly. Up to the third, come down to the, oh, come on, do it. Yeah, okay. Come down to the four. So it changes a little bit. So what we have above 4177 is 4200. Clean as a bell. And then we have 4227. And then 618, where wave five would be 618 of wave three, is at 43, 4235, 55, excuse me. <coughs> Somehow my vision is getting pretty bad here. So again, 4255. So we'll call it 50 to 55. And then it goes up from there. But I would think that wave C, excuse me, wave five would be 618. That's the most common. This has been a long and arduous rally in its entirety. <clears throat> Don't be fooled. And that all the world is calling that October low as the end of the bear market. It's just not. This is not a bullish start to a new up move. So whatever they're doing, the structure does not agree with them. The rallies are intense, but here we are in the daily. We've had two days of kick your butt rallies and look at them teeny tiny. You can't even see them. So I'm not going to get excited. So, yep, I am looking for a continued upside. And the triangle pattern continues to be valid if I move the A over to here and label, relabel this A, B, C, D, E. And the E wave should still come in under the C wave. 4250, that could work. But 4230 works just fine. 4200 also works just fine. So, lot happening. And the market is pretty well primed to continue to go up. 
We're going to see how this all works out. Right now, they're going to open it unchanged. <clears throat> NASDAQ looks like it'll open down just a little bit. We'll see what they want to do. And then we'll go from there. But right now, I am looking for additional upside. If that triangle pattern completes, remember, please, it would still end in a thrust out of the triangle, which is going to be the width between here. So wherever it ends up, whether it be 4226, 41, 4200, wherever it ends up, then it's going to drop very quickly. We'll give it a couple of days or two or three days, but it should drop pretty quickly down to these levels. Now, again, pre-market, you got JP Morgan and Citigroup and retail sales. Could it be enough? Yeah, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. That's where I'm going to end it for right now. Again, please excuse my not noticing my own error. And I'll tell you why. Because I kept thinking, oh, it works inside, but I was counting it incorrectly. I needed to move the A. Then it still worked inside. So that really was my error. So please forgive me for doing that. Accept what I've done and realize that it could still be a triangle. So we're still running the same counts. I was a little bit anxious there. Our next update will be on Sunday, the 16th of April.